welcome back to another video out here on my boat with Nick and we got my brother Ben up there Oliver's on his boat right here come to say what up but um, today we're out here at the local spots just kind of spot hopping around trying to find some biting rockfish um, and then we're gonna switch to halibut we're gonna focus on the rockfish first because a lot of the spots here are very small before the wind wind picks up and uh, hopefully get a limit of, of reds and then switch to drifting for halibut but stay tuned should be fun marks right there <laughs> you just had a fish? Yeah. Oh, dude, a little double chovy. Double chovy in it? Love that. So good. So good. Whoa, man! Oh. <laughs> that was pretty quick. You get it? <laughs> just right on the right way. Really? You got him on? Oh, I think I'm fishing. Jigging up some reds. Nice. <laughs> thought it, you, you thought it felt funny? Yeah. She's just ripping them around down there. Yeah. <laughs> you got a roller coaster. <laughs> Going up, down, up, down. Yeah. Next bit too. Right when you hit bottom. Sweet. I like that. You drop down the double chovy. Oh, you got the talica also? When'd you get that bad boy? Oh, double red. <laughs> double red? Sick. Whoa. Yeah, dude, those are good reds. Oh, solid. yeah. There we go. Nice. That's sick, buddy. Alright, alright. Boom. That's what we want. That's the right kind. Sick. Alright, just stopped on a rockfish spot. I think it's uh I think it's biting. First two baits. That Nick <laughs> dropped, double reds. Ben <laughs> dropped a jig, got a red. So I'm gonna finish rig it up and I got some fun jigs I wanna drop down there. Oh Ben's on! <laughs> Same jig? Yeah. Shimano. Dude, it's actually really fun. <laughs> Jigging them up? Yeah. Don't worry, I'll eventually get the rig mine up. <laughs> ben on the spinning reel, dude. Salping it up. Spinner for some dinner. Spinner for some dinner. Florida guy, big Florida guy over here. You gotta wear pastel colors though, man. They don't allow camouflage in Florida. Two reds on the jig? And, and your bit again? Uh, we might get our limit here pretty quick. On the dead chubby. You dropped the dead chubby down there? Are you still reeling them up? Oh, another one. Oh, did you drop it back down? <laughs> nice. That's uh, working smarter, not harder right there. Drop it back down so you don't have to reel it up. With just one? Nice, double reds again. Sweet. Oh my god. You want me to drop that down there? <laughs> Alright. See what happens. Catch bluefin one day and a red the next. Yeah. I like that. Ben's got a big one on too. Let's see if we can find some bigger fish down there. There's gotta be. Yeah, dude, this thing looks sick. Wait, it's a corny. Oh. You get bit? Yeah, I got bit. Oh, pop off. Oh, he's on, he's on, uh... I don't know. I can't tell if they keep biting it or if yeah. it's still on there. All right, I'm gonna drop something heavier on. This is ridiculous. Drop like a big shimano. flat fall. Nick got another good one. Huh. Look at that. Nice. Oh, got another one on the chovy. Yep. Come on, shrimpy. Pull the big old sheets. Right, dude? That'd be sick. Oh, that's a better one. Got a good one? Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's two. Unless it's a double? Yeah. Nice. Let me know when it's close. Nick's just freaking whacking them on the show. Me. If I were smarter, I'd... Uh, that's a good one. Is it? If I were smarter, I'd be doing the same thing instead of trying to... Oh, I'm getting bit. Instead of trying the, the shrimp. Oh, 
But with a shrimp, there's an outside chance of catching like a, a sheep head or something different. Which will be rad. Get double good one. Is it? Yeah. One big good one on the bottom. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think Chovies are definitely the uh, that's a good one, man. That's a solid Sick one. double, so that's 10 now. Yeah. So we need two more. Let me catch two. You are you getting are they eating the um, just the dead ones too? Dude, that one was hooked, ripped it off, ate it, and then Here's ate this one. <laughs> That one was definitely hooked. <laughs> his yeah. mouth is all messed up. And then he ate the second one. So he coughed up the one that he stole off. He got greedy, man. He should have stopped at one. <laughs> That's a nice one, man. Whoa! Nice red. Sick! All right, so with the shrimp, I was just getting little short bites. Uh, there's probably whitefish and stuff down there too, huh? Yeah. And with the, an the anchovy, it definitely keeps... Uh, that kind of buy catch away because Nick's been freaking smoking them on the, on the anchovies. So I'm dropping down some some dead anchovies here. Hopefully I can catch a fish. <coughs> oh, dude. Head shakes. Is it a good one? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Get the gas. Dude, they're loving the chovies. That's oh. crazy. And they won't even, they're not even touching Yeah, Nick's got thing. sardines down literally right there, right where he's smoking them, and he's not getting a single bite. But as soon as live chovies hit the bottom, it's game on. Or dead. Or, or dead, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I we should just cut a sardine in half. I was going to say, bro, like we should start buying those frozen packs of anchovy. Just yeah, because how many times? I like, mean, how many times we're like, oh, there's nothing here. Yeah. When if we had chovies, it would have been wide open. Yeah, like how many times you drop squid down and nothing but whitefish, you know? Strip mackerel works pretty yeah. good too, but uh oh, we might have just learned something about rock fishing. Oh, no. look at that! Good ones. Yeah, we got coughing up those. Gross little selps. <laughs> And boom, just like that, that's the limits. We got our 12 reds. Uh, obviously the key was the anchovy and the jig for a minute and then they got tired of it. You caught the four aggressive ones. Yeah. <laughs> well, when they got, I'm, sh I'm sure when they have live anchovies in there, they're like, oh, yeah. like that's dead. Yeah, they get a little a little picky at that point. A lot of short bites on the on the shrimp, but I like to drop the shrimp just in case there's a big sheep head or something. That's probably the, that's probably the biggest one that Nick got right there. Yeah, that guy. Nice red. All right, well, obviously we're done rock fishing. We're going to go drift for halibut now. But, um, yeah, we got our limit in 20 minutes, yeah. 20, 30 minutes, which is pretty, pretty solid. Um, obviously, having the spot lock on a small boat makes it a lot easier to fish um, these smaller rockfish spots. If we had to, like, set up and drift over this, it would have been a way bigger headache. But I think we, we, we could have made it happen. But spot lock is uh, definitely clutch. But yeah, we'll uh, see you guys at the filet table and then in the kitchen. All right, back at the house, getting ready to filet up these reds. Um, turned out to be a super fun day of rock fishing. Um, we explored a little bit and tried a couple new spots that we found. And uh, the first few were super slow, didn't catch anything worth keeping. And then we found that one spot that was absolutely loaded with reds we only caught one other rockfish species um you know it's a little bit smaller one so we let that one go but we caught our limit of reds which for three people is 12 for a person um in like 20 minutes so cannot ask for better red fishing um again this is like perfect eating size in my opinion right here the bigger ones can be uh, i don't know just not as not as good of the of, of a fillet but you guys haven't seen my other rockfish videos this is how I like to fillet them. Just do a head cut right there and then go ahead and trace down the back. Just a nice shallow cut. And once you've done that, then you can guide that knife just down those bones right there. I don't know what that noise was. <laughs> It's Saturday, so people are getting weird. Nice. 
fish is nice and cold. But just trace it on, on down. Once I get here, just pop it through. And then you can follow the, that spine just down towards the tail there. And once I've traced it, I leave that on. Um, the reason I leave it on is because when you flip it over, it still lays flat. If that fillet is moved or removed, it'll kind of angle like this. And I've, I've found it just makes it harder to get a clean cut on the other side. Um, again, personal preference, just the way I like to do it. Is that Mr. Worldwide? Have they? Oh my god. That's like a holiday. Boom. So both sides are traced. Both fillets are ready to be removed. And right here, I just use like the thick part of the knife. Again, like I said, every time I've shown this fillet method, the only thing you gotta watch out for are these spines right here because now I'm moving the knife towards the spines and I have caught myself right in the knuckles and that does not feel good. So just make sure your knuckles are clear of that and you can just break the rib bones in one cut. Flip it over like that. To the edge of the table. Look at that. Perfect eating size, beautiful filet. Like reds are such an amazing fish, amazing table fare. Especially when they're biting wide open like we found them. <laughs> it's fun fishing. Oh. Flip it over. Add to the table. All right, and then I'm gonna show you that this technique, got ice cubes in his mouth. So I'm gonna show you how fast this technique can, can be when you're not talking. Um, tracing is known to kind of be like a slower technique, but once you've gotten it down, it, you can do it pretty quick. Right on, let's go cook some food. Gotta pause you right there. Look at this guy. 
grow our own avocado. Avocado tree, there's number one. And <laughs> number two. Maybe we'll try out that one, that looks like a good seed. Pretty cool though, right? All right, back to chopping. All right, and there we have our vegetables. Diced up, ready to go. Tomato, onion, lettuce, avocado. Can't go wrong. Tempura batter, make a little beer batter. Also, we did go to Hawaii, as you can tell from the Hawaiian shot glasses. We we're gone for two weeks. Vacuum sealed that fish. I thawed it out in the fridge. Let me get better lighting here. Thawed it out in the fridge, so it's still cold, still firm, but when you vacuum seal and label your fish correctly, it makes it super easy to keep really delicious fresh fish for months. So we got two packs here for Rachel and I. Uh, we're gonna use these little street tacos actually, these little flour tortillas. Um, I'm a huge fan of flour tortillas. Corn's like whatever to me, I'll eat it, but I don't love it. So I'm gonna cut those up. I'm gonna get the beer batter mixed up in here. Let's see what we got in the fridge. Do, do, do. Oh, uh, maybe, yeah, beer batter for fish tacos, maybe a Modelo. Can't go wrong with that. And let's get cooking. Three, four. Those look absolutely delicious. So they are still a little moist. Um, when you vacuum seal them, there's still some moisture in the filet. So I'm just gonna hit them with a the paper towel real quick. Try to get them as dry as possible and then give them a once over. Make sure there's no pin bones or rib bones or bloodline, any of that stuff that you may have missed when you were initially filleting the fish. Um, I know sometimes when you get back from a long trip, and you're filleting fish, you can easily miss those things and, or overlook them or just you're at that point where you just don't care anymore. So now's a good time to just give them a little once over, make sure, even like little scales like right there, like you can pick those off. Let's try to get them as clean as possible. So I set them aside so there's one, one taco, two tacos, three tacos right there. Make it really easy on yourself so you're not wasting any of the fish. Not overcooking anything, making too much stuff because again, you work hard to catch this fish. You don't want to cook too much and have no one eat it. I really love this McCormick tempura batter. If you guys have a different batter that you guys like to use, let me know. Always open to try some new, some new stuff. But this is this is my go-to. It's easily found in all of our markets around here. So. Next. Half the bag, set that aside. And for me personally, I like to add a little black pepper. Just adds a little kick and a little bit of, honestly, it just kind of looks good on the, uh, on the fish when it comes out. You can taste it a little bit, but it's not that crazy. So just a little bit of black pepper, crack our beer open, gotta give it a little taste to make sure it's good. Yep, that's good. And then just stir it up. That looks pretty good. All right, next up, you gotta get the oil in the pan, get that nice and hot. It needs to get a little hotter. That took a little too long to pop back up. I wanna see a little sizzle there, so. Let's set that heat up, but how we're going to make our tacos is a little bit of tartar sauce on those tortillas, and then we have two different types of hot sauce that we can add. A little gringo bandito. Fun fact, I actually modeled for that picture there. 
believe it or not. And then the... Why do you look so confused? You didn't know that, Rachel? Wait, what? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> it looks like you. <laughs> and then the ch Chipotle Tabasco. These are my two favorite hot sauces I've ever found for fish tacos or just honestly anything in general. See that hits the bottom, starts sizzling, pops right back up. So that's that oil looks like it's ready. Turn the heat down just a little bit now that we got it at the desired temperature, but look at that. I want that one. <laughs> you got dibs on that one? Mm -hmm. Do people say, still say dibs? So these look done, they smell delicious, and a uh, little background on uh, on your boy Adam here. I actually used to work at In-N-Out. And I made it to level four. I was on the fries, so frying things is one of my favorite things to do. Um, and for those that don't know, stop laughing, Rachel. For those that don't know, if you leave them here while these ones are cooking, they get a little a little soggy. You can always throw them back in, and just gives them like a little little double crisp. But uh, yeah, shout out to everyone that's worked at uh, In and Out and/or still frequents that place because it's delicious. I frequent it. Rachel, what are you doing back there? Mm -hmm. Why is there a piece missing from the pile? <laughs> you want some tartar sauce for it? Just go right in. Yeah, I would like to try them both, either fried or both unfried. But at the oh, end of the day, they're all good. Cook them the same side by yeah. side. Yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah, that's what I like about you, Rachel, is like you're down to try the fish just plain cook the same way to actually like taste the fish. Yeah, I wanna know what the fish tastes like. Yeah. A little tartar sauce on the fish taco. I'm gonna do what Rachel did and use this piece. Just kinda of on some tartar sauce. So hot. So good. No, it's super good, real light, real flaky. I mean, look at that. No, it's two fish. Oh. There you go, Rachel. Got that for you. All right, and there's the avocado. If you guys have watched my other videos, there is one ingredient missing the rice, but I left that out because there's ab absolutely no room for rice on these little tiny tortillas. So if you like rice on your tacos, don't get these little street taco ones because it's not going to work out for you. And of course onion. Rachel and I both love onion. Can I say the most important thing? It is really important. Go. And then for me, I'm gonna try. Rachel, you can add your hot sauce as you see fit. I'm gonna mm -hmm. do one with the Tabasco. Okay. One with the Gringo Bandito. Adam sauce. The Adam sauce. And then one with both. Oh wow. Can't tell I love hot sauce. I'm gonna go Gringo Bandito first. Cheers, everybody. So good. I mean, rockfish, fish tacos, staple here in Southern California. Can't go wrong with it. Mm. Before I finish that one, I wanna try the Chipotle. Let's see which one I actually really prefer.
I don't know, I have to say, for whatever reason, the smokiness of that hot sauce with fish, I think it's just unmatched. Delicious. Anyways, guys, we're gonna polish these off. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. And uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Later.